It is so good to see you today. I'm Miss Heather, and this is Bible Blast. Look at all of these cool books I have on the shelf here. There are so many neat stories to read. Some of my favorite stories are stories from the Bible because they're interesting and you can learn a lot about God and Jesus. What story do you think we should read today? How about we ask Miss Kelly and see if she has any ideas? Oh, hi there. Let's sing a song. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. And I am one of them, and so are you, and you, and you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. And I am one of them, and so are you, and you, and you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. And I am one of them. And so are you, and you, and you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. And I am one of them. And so are you, and you, and you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. And I am one of them, and so are you, and you, and you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot, nod your head. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham. And I am one of them, and so are you, and you, and you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Nod your head, turn around. Father Abraham had many sons, and many sons had Father Abraham, and I am one of them, and so are you. So let's all praise the Lord. Right arm, left arm, right foot, left foot. Nod your head, turn around, sit down. <sighs> friends, I'm Miss Kelly, and I have something that I want to show you today. This is our garden. We've got a lot of plants that are growing some vegetables in our garden. Have you ever planted a garden? Sounds like some of you have. Well, we really like our vegetable garden. Back in March, when the weather was still cold, we took some tiny seeds, like this, and planted them in some little pots in our basement. And those plants started to grow and grow and grow. Then, when the weather was warm enough, we came and planted them outside. And as you can tell, some of these plants are pretty tall. Some of them are taller than me, which is pretty incredible of how these tiny seeds could grow into something really big. And then you know what? It doesn't just grow into something big. We've been getting lots of yummy tomatoes and other vegetables off of these plants that we can eat. And not just one or two, but tons. This is just from today. That's enough for me today and maybe tomorrow too. Isn't that kind of cool? God can take something like these tiny seeds and make it into something big that produces a lot of fruit and vegetables for lots of people to eat. This is reminding me of a story when Jesus did something that seemed impossible, where he took something that seemed like just a little bit and made it into more than what everyone needed. 
Let's go inside and I'll read you this story. Today's story comes from the Jesus Storybook Bible. Filled Full, the Feeding of the 5,000 from Matthew chapter 14. There were once 5,000 tired and hungry and probably very grumpy people sitting on a hillside wanting their dinner. They come to hear Jesus that day. They came before breakfast and stayed all morning, all afternoon, and way past dinner. No one had meant to be out there that long, but that's how it was, listening to Jesus, as if time didn't exist. People could just listen to Jesus for hours, and on this particular day, that's just what they did. But they hadn't brought enough food, and they couldn't just go and buy themselves a burger and fries to go because, of course, they were in the middle of nowhere with no shops or restaurants. Besides, that kind of food wasn't invented yet. What would they do? Jesus' friends had an idea. Let's send everyone home for dinner. They don't need to go, Jesus said. You can give them something to eat. Did Jesus want them to travel all the way to town and buy food for everyone? Jesus' friends panicked. But we don't have enough money. What food do you have? Jesus asked. Go and see. Now there was a little boy in the crowd. He had brought a lunch that his mother had made him that morning. He looked at his five loaves and two fish. It wasn't much, not nearly enough for that 5,000, but it was all that he had. I have some, he said. Jesus' friends laughed when they saw his little lunch. That's not nearly enough, they said, but they were wrong. Jesus knew it didn't matter how much the little boy had. God would make it enough, more than enough. Jesus said, bring me what you have. And so the little boy gave Jesus his lunch. Jesus winked at the little boy and whispered in his ear, watch. How in the world will Jesus feed everyone with just that, Jesus' friends said, because they thought it was impossible. But Jesus knew the one who made all the fish in the oceans, and Jesus knew the one who in the very beginning had made everything out of nothing at all. How hard would something like this be for someone like that? Jesus took the little boy's lunch and looked up to heaven and thanked his father. Then Jesus gave the little lunch back to his friends. As Jesus' friends started to hand out the food, do you know what? It was the strangest thing. No matter how much they broke off, there was always more and more and more. Enough for 5,000. Everyone ate as much as they wanted, second helpings, third helpings, even fourths, until they were full, and still there were leftovers. Well, Jesus did many miracles like this, things people thought couldn't happen that weren't natural, but it was the most natural thing in all the world. It's what God had had been doing from the beginning, of course, taking nothing and making it everything, taking the emptiness and filling it up, taking the darkness and making it light. Hi guys, welcome back. So for our create time today, we are gonna be making something from our story that we read. 
So our story today was about the little boy who shared his lunch. Yeah, it was. What did he have in his lunch, Emerson? Um, loaves, five loaves of bread and two loaves of fish. Five loaves of bread and two fish, that is correct. And so we are gonna be making some bread today um, to share with our friends, okay? So here's the things that you're going to need today, okay? You're gonna need three cups of flour total, um, but like, divided like, up. Yeah, yep. but we, that's our flour. Yeah, that's our flour. And then you'll need either one of those packets of um, dry yeast, or uh -huh. if you have a little jar of yeast, it'll be about um, two and a quarter teaspoons, mm -hmm. not tablespoons. So kids, this is gonna be a project that you're gonna need your help from your parents with probably. Um, one, because we're gonna be using a hot oven, and two, um, we'll be using some ingredients in the kitchen that you need to get permission from your parents for before you start using them, okay? So make sure on those. And then we need three tablespoons of white sugar. Yes, yeah, our white sugar. Yeah, that's our white sugar. Three tablespoons of olive oil. That's our olive oil. Uh, one cup of warm water, um, hot or warm water from the tap is plenty warm. You don't want it to be too hot. And then uh, half a tablespoon of salt, okay? Yeah, that's our salt. All right. And that's so, a lot. If you uh, don't have it. The easiest way to do this for kids and the fun way is gonna be to have like a gallon size Ziploc bag that closes up really nice and tight for you, okay? So we're gonna get started here, okay? You guys gonna be my helpers? Yeah. For our helpers here, we're gonna start with one cup of flour. So one of those three cups of flour and is gonna go in. into yep, our Ziploc bag. And I can do the other one. Okay, yep, make sure it goes in there. Okay. Now it's my turn. Then we need to add in our sugar. Pour in our sugar. So that's three, yes, three tablespoons of sugar. Good job. Oh, just a little bit stuck down in there. Okay. And then Easton, can you pour in our yeast? So the sugar actually helps feed the yeast. The yeast is what helps our bread grow and rise and get bigger. And it likes lots of yummy sugar. Can I do it All right, I'm just saying, yep, we're gonna do this together. And then our one cup of warm water. So the warm water helps wake up the yeast and tells it to get going, to start making some bubbles. But if it's too warm, it's too hot, then it, it, it kills the yeast and we don't wanna do that. Okay, now you want to try, this is where the parents will have to help out a little bit. You want to try to remove some of the air from your bag, or as much of the air as you can. So kind of fold it over and then seal it down. You want to hear all those clicks. So this is really important, kids and moms and dads or grandparents that are helping out. Make sure the seal is very good or you will have a mess all over your kitchen. Okay, now this is the fun part. You guys squish it. Squish it all together and mix up the ingredients. Squish, squish, then squish, squish, squish. your mommy hold it in place, then the kids can squish it together. Wow, right. you're getting those. Right, good. <laughs> squishy, 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 squishy. That's so fun. So fun. Now you need to wait for 10 minutes. So we've got it, all our ingredients all kind of squished up here. You can just leave it flat on your counter. You can leave it flat on your counter and just at room temperature, let it sit here for 10 minutes. And this is the fun part, kids. You can kind of come and watch. It'll start burping. It's going to make little air bubbles in that bag, um, and you can watch it. That's the yeast starting to grow. Okay? Uh, that's so funny. It is funny. Mom. All right, so we'll be back in about 10 minutes to come and check and do the next step. Thanks, guys. Mm -hmm. See any bubbles? Can you point to any bubbles that you're seeing? A few bubbles there. There's a few bubbles everywhere. Mm -hmm. Whoop! Okay, so it has been 10 minutes 
and our bag has a lot of bubbles in the dough. Yours does too. And it's even the bag, you can see it's got a little bit more air in there. We had squeezed a lot of the air out, but all those little burnt bubbles made the bag expand some more. Yeah. All right, so now you're gonna go back and it's helpful if you have a bowl that you can set it down in because when you open it, it'll just kind of go everywhere. We, now we're gonna add in one more cup of flour in here. And again, have some parents help here maybe. Make sure we don't dump it on the floor. We've done that before, haven't we? Okay. All right, then we need your salt. So that half a tablespoon of salt. Pour that in. Good job. All right, that's one. Okay, Easton, can you do our second one? Then I love your turn. So we have three people doing it, so we can each do one of our three tablespoons of oil. Now you just do this by yourself, Mom. All right, there we go. Again, just like we did last time, we seal up our bag, but we want to try to get as much air out of it again as we can. All right. So again, if the kids do it, moms and dads, I encourage you to double check the seal on it. Make sure it's sealed all the way across a couple of times, okay? Now we squish it around again to mix it all up. Yeah, I wanna do it too. <laughs> okay. Gentle, gentle, remember, gentle. Not too rough because we don't wanna poke a hole in the bag accidentally, that would make a big mess. And again, if you don't wanna do this in a bag, that's fine, you can always just do it in a bowl. Um, but it's a little bit more fun to get to do it in a bag. Yeah, because this is the funner mm -hmm. part. But you can't squish it together while yeah. you're doing it in the bowl. Yeah, you can't use your hands in the bowl. You could probably use like a big spoon or something. Yeah, to squish it. Again, you just want to kind of massage it in. Mm -hmm. Kind of see we got a little bit of oil still over on this side. Yeah. And we want that all mixed through. All right. Then we're going to add our last cup of flour. Right. And then. We're gonna just mix it one more time until it's all nice and blended. So I'm gonna kind of open this up as much as I can here. All right, whoops. All right, there we go. I got flour on my hand. That I'm, gonna, I'm gonna squish it up again. With yeah, this we're gonna all squish it up again. So again, last time here of get it all down at the bottom. So mix it up. I'll do it. Okay, so you can see we've got a big ball of dough in here, kind of squished around. When you've got most of that flour incorporated, it's okay. We can kind of stop there. You're just going to kind of lightly flour your surface. So we just get a big spoon and kind of sprinkle a little bit of flour there. All right, good. There you go. And if you hadn't already, we should have said this at the very beginning, but if you hadn't already, be sure and wash your hands uh, for this part before you even start, it's a good idea. Um, so hopefully everybody's got some good clean hands already at this point. Like that cool, the cool, clean just, hands? Yep, go ahead. You just kind of spread the flour around lightly on the surface so that it doesn't stick there. Now this is gonna be a little bit of the tricky part is getting all your dough out because it's really sticky still at this point. Um, one trick is to um, add just a little bit of more flour. If your dough is super, super sticky, you can just pour a little bit more dough in there. Um, or wow. sometimes it'll come right out. Most of that came out pretty good. Um, if you do have a little a big clump stuck inside, you can just reach in. You can turn your bag wrong side out. You can reach in and try to pull some of it out, but some of it's gonna be pretty sticky. <laughs> All right, so now what you wanna do, this is the part that takes a little bit of time, is you wanna knead your dough for about eight minutes. And just as you go, if you need to, you just add a little bit more flour. So I keep my flour close by so we can keep doing it. So how you knead it is you take one side, fold it to the middle, and press. I want to do it. Yep, you can do it too. So this is pretty sticky still, so I'm gonna get some more. Here, let me sprinkle just a little bit more on there before we knead. So you want it to make it like a soft dough, kind of a, a nice smooth dough. If it's really sticky, um, it's 
too shaggy. I want to uh -huh. do that. Yep. Grab the top and pull it down. Or from the bottom and push it up. There you go. Good job. Now turn it. Good job. And turn. And do it this way. So we're setting our timer for eight minutes so we know about how long we're kneading our dough and then we'll be back in just a moment. Okay so it's been about eight minutes that we were kneading our dough, our bread, and if you'll see it's nice and smooth right now. That's what you want, okay? So it's not still just a little sticky but um, it shouldn't stick to your hands anymore. You should have clean hands if you touch it. Um, so for this next part you need your bread pans, okay? So there's a few different options here you can do, okay? If you want, you can just do one big loaf of bread. Um, so you could just take this, kind of make it into a longer um, loaf shape. Or if you have any mini loaf pans, you can buy some little disposable ones. Or if you have some, you can make four mini loaves and then you could share these just like the boy did in his story. Um, with like a neighbor or take them to a friend or if you have a, a teacher or somebody that you want to share these with um, or a family member you could make this for everybody to have some. Um, what we're gonna do because we don't have four mini loaf pans we're gonna do two mini loaves and then we have this kind of medium sized loaf pan that we're gonna do. So um, you're gonna have to cut your dough if you're doing uh, smaller loaves you have to cut it um, so if you have a butter knife or if you again if you have a parent with a sharper uh, knife uh -huh, or you have this knife you can use that one too that's right we have this it's called a pastry scraper mm -hmm. and that's what we use to cut our dough when we're gonna cut it so we're gonna cut it right in half here just push it down oh good okay so we've got one half here. So since we're going to do one medium size and two little, I'm going to set that side one over to the side. Actually, let me use here. This one's just going to be okay. We'll use this one. And then this other half here, we're going to cut in half too because this is going to be our two mini loaves. If you're doing four mini loaves, you want to cut it into four equal parts. All right. So when you get your little ones, you just want to kind of shape it into a, a little bit of a long loaf. It doesn't have to be too long. A circle will work too. Um, but you just kind of do it under. If you want it looking smooth. If you want to knead it a couple of times again, you could um, just to make it nice and smooth. And then you just kind of, I like to place it with the, if the side that's a little bit rougher with the seam side down in our pan. Oh, and make sure, sorry, make sure and grease your pans. So you can use either like a cooking spray or brush it with a little bit of olive oil or um, uh, butter if you would like. Will work as well. I did mm -hmm. that. Oh, no, you did. Let me just mold it a little bit more there. Good. Give it a nice smooth top. Are you gonna do this one yep. too? That okay. one's gonna go on our medium size pan. All right, just like that. Okay. Now what we're gonna do? This is a part that you, ha you have to learn some patience. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna have to let these rise. So dough when you're making bread, um, it takes time to rise. So we're going to leave these right here on top of our stove top where it's a little warm. We have a little bit of warmth. And you want to grab a tea towel or a dishcloth, a tea towel or a dishcloth of some sort. I have this, Mom. Mm -hmm. And okay. just cover them just like that. And they're going to need to set here for about 45 to 60 minutes to rise. Okay, so just leave them in kind of a little bit of a warm place. It doesn't need to be hot. Um, but if you've got a sunny window or just right on top of your stove is a good place. Um, so we're going to let these rise for 45 to 60 minutes. They should double in size. So remember how we were talking about those yeast that had those burp bubbles in the bag? Well, they're still burping in there, um, but it's making the dough expand and it helps it grow. Um, so we're going to leave that right there and we'll check back in about 45 to 60 minutes. See you guys soon. See you guys soon. Bye-bye. One more thing to remember, when you get to about 10 minutes left before your time of your dough rising, you wanna start warming up your oven. Um, so you need to set your oven to 
375 degrees. Okay. <laughs> do we do we operate an oven without a mommy and a daddy? No. So again, make sure you got those parents close by, okay? So they can warm up that oven to 375 degrees. Um, so that it'll be perfect and ready for us once our dough is all risen. Okay, so it's been about 45 um, almost a minute, so almost an hour actually, um, for our bread to rise. And as you can see, it's definitely doubled in size. So for our mini loaves, they're filling up the pan and our medium sized loaf is nice and big. You don't want to let it rise too long because it can uh, fall or, or um, not rise as much. Our oven's already preheated 375. So again, kids, make sure you get an adult to help you here with putting the pans in the oven because the oven is very hot. So I'm just gonna slide these in our oven here real quick. And since I'm doing different size loaves, um, it'll take a little bit different amounts of time. So probably somewhere between 20 and 25 minutes, I would check on them and see how they're doing. Um, you want them the nice kind of golden brown on top and crispy and um, then you can pull them out. So we'll check back in about 20 minutes and see how they're looking. Okay, so our bread is done. Um, for reference, for these little smaller loaves, it took about 20 minutes at 375 degrees. And then for our kind of medium sized loaf, it took 25 minutes. Um, they're nice and golden brown. So again, kids, before you get it out of the oven, get your parent to help you um, so they can use a hot pad. And then we let these set out so the pans would cool uh, for 10 or 15 minutes. And then Sometimes you need to run just like a butter knife along the edges to help loosen it on the side of the pan. And then you can turn them out like that and set them up to finish cooling. You want to let your bread finish cool in here and then you can slice it up and eat it for a meal or um, some of these little ones you could wrap them up in some saran wrap or um, aluminum foil or parchment paper and share them with a friend or a neighbor um, and be just like our boy our boy who shared his um, lunch with everybody and Easton showed you this is a little bit more of an involved create activity. Um, and so Easton came up with another idea if anybody else would rather do something else rather than make uh, actual bread. You wanna show them? Cut out a bread and make, and you can do it whatever color you want. And and you can decorate it too. Mm -hmm. It's yours. Yep, it's yours. So yeah. this bread is yours too, and you can share it. And if this is too complicated, you can always just make some construction paper and cut out the shapes of bread and play out the story. Okay. Yep. Who should we share our bread with? Uh, maybe Everly and Vivian. Oh, your friends Everly and Vivian. Yeah. So we'll share these with our neighbors today. Thanks, guys. Hope Bye. you have fun. Hey, kids. Thanks for joining us for Bible Blast. Hope you had a blast.